Here at part two of our six part series, we're going to cover configure or configuration, CH for central heat, DHW, which is domestic hot water, and outdoor reset. Under configuration, um, you can get in and you'll see more options for outdoor reset, pump configure, additional settings there as well. Configuration menu or configure menu. Um, now here we'll go back to CH. Now we already covered this under Quick Start. When I come into CH under configuration, we now have more options. Under Quick Start, we only had enable, disable, and set point. This is where the installer uh, or service technician wants to be. And you'll see some of these you're not allowed to edit. We are allowed to change the set point, um, which allows, but back to enable, disable, or things like the differential, which is a hysteresis. You need to be in the installer password. What is the installer password? Right up here, the password, just click the icon and type in 17. That is the installer password. When I click enter, now you'll see the letter I for installer appear in the icon. And now we're allowed to edit. So example, um, you can actually disable CH1. I'm going to back this out for a second, and I mentioned to you previously uh, that you could disable CH2 if you were only using CH1. So that is where, in this example, I'll come in and I'll disable it. So now we only have one set point. I'll come back to CH1 and we'll talk about this. I think we understand set point. You're going to get in and make any changes you need. But hysteresis, what is hysteresis? And here we have off hysteresis. Hysteresis is a differential. So in the example, we had a 180 degree set point with a 10 degree off hysteresis or differential. That means the boiler would come as high as 190 degrees before it would shut off internally. Now keep in mind, if you have higher set points, hypothetically 190, you do not want to have a 10 degree off hysteresis. Why? Because you're pushing 200 degrees and you could trip limit. So on your higher set points, back this out, my suggestion in that example would be 5 degrees. So if I have a 190 degree set point, my off point becomes 195. Uh, stay away from the limit conditions. On hysteresis is your on point. So I use the example of 190. 10 degrees on hysteresis means at 180 it would refire. You can spread that out on a hydronic heating system if you cared to. Example, maybe I'll say 20 degrees, and that means at 190 set point, now I'll drop down as low as 170 before the boiler would refire. And I'm using an example of 190. Typically, 180 is more than sufficient for any hydronic type system. Max power, I want to talk about this as well. And here is our range from 20% of fire to 100% of fire. So you could derate a boiler if needed. Example of that, let's say a service technician is on a job and the gas regulator can't keep up. We need 4 to 10 inches of gas pressure and every time it goes to high fire we're dropping down too low and the boiler flames out or trips on a low gas pressure switch. In that case you could back this out hypothetically and choose 50% and operate that boiler to 50 percent until the gas company could come in and, and correct the regulator. Or if you have a boiler that you might need 2,000 BTUs for the domestic load but you only need 1,000 BTUs for the heating load, that's where you could come in and derate a boiler if needed. So now I'm going to go back and by the way up here on the navigation bar we refer to this as the navigation bar. We went from the home screen we chose configuration icon, central heat icon, and we're under CH1. Now we can just simply back this out, work back here, or we can come back up to the icon here. Example, if I wanted to go back to configuration, or if I was here and I wanted to come back to the home screen, I just press the home symbol, it brings me right back to the home screen. Now domestic hot water um, on a volume water heater, you'll see that I'm showing an image of a home screen, three different DHW set points. So DHW1, DHW2, and DHW3. Uh, on a volume water heater, you don't have CH, you have DHW. And how DHW1 and DHW2 work 
is just like a central heat, uh, CH. What I mean by that is it's going to work on the outlet sensor of the boiler. So if you were to program DHW1 and DHW2 for you know, 140 and 130, that is on the outlet temperature, the outlet sensor of the boiler. You would also use a mechanical aquastat in that case on a holding tank or storage tank. However, THW3, we give you more options here, um, and we do provide you with a sensor that can go out in the tank. And here I'm showing under configuration one of the DHW screens. Again, you can enable or disable any one of these parameters such as DHW2. Um, your set point, I think we understand. Click on set point, go in and choose your value. In that example will choose 140 degrees. You've got your on and off differentials. You would set those up as well. But there's something else I want to talk about here is DHW offset. And what is that? When you're using a sensor in a tank, we want our outlet temperature of the boiler or water heater higher than your set point. So an example of 140, I at least want 150, 160, or 170 degrees exiting the water heater. Why? Because I want to be able to satisfy that tank quickly. If we only deliver 140 and we've got a 140 set point, it could take forever to satisfy the demand. So in the example in our manual, we're showing you an example of 140 degree set point with a 40 degree offset. So our heater outlet temperature would be 180. So that way we'd be able to satisfy that demand in that tank. Again, that sensor currently is only going to be utilized on DHW3. Next, we'll talk about outdoor reset. Before we get into the navigation, I'll talk a little bit about an outdoor reset curve and how it works. Over here on the left-hand column, this is your supply temperature. Uh, to the system. Down here is outdoor air temperature. And again, we give you an outdoor sensor. You would install that outside and you would set up your curve. Um, an example of that is a zero degree day. <clears throat> Maybe we'll deliver 170. So that's your CH set point. So if you had a CH set point of 180 um, and you chose a minimum outdoor temperature of zero, at zero degrees, we'll deliver 180. So that's your design temperature for your region. Let's say Boston, uh, Massachusetts is 10 degrees above zero, so your minimum outdoor temperature would be 10. Maybe in uh, Minneapolis, it's minus five. Uh, your minimum outdoor temperature there would be minus five. Your maximum outdoor temperature, uh, and in this example, we chose 50 degrees with a low water temperature. So what that means is at 50 degrees, if we plot this, we'll only deliver 130. So again, on your design day, and our example with zero, to zero degrees, we'll come up and deliver 170 degrees. But as it warms up outside, in this example now, at 25 degrees, if we plot that, we'll deliver 150 to the heating system. Right? Uh, keep in mind, that's your supply temperature, your return temperature back to the boiler. If you're designed around a 20 degree delta T, would be 130. If you're at a 30 degree delta T, will be returning at 120, and I bring that up for condensing reasons for condensing applications. I want to talk about outdoor reset. You can enable it or disable it. Why would you ever disable outdoor reset? Well, if energy management is controlling the outdoor reset, uh, that's where you'd come in and disable it. It's currently disabled from the factory. So if you have an outdoor sensor and we're doing outdoor reset, you need to enable it. Um, it will not allow you to enable if you're not in the icon for installer. Maximum outdoor temperature, this is where you're going to come in and adjust your max outdoor temperature. Uh, my example I'll choose is 50 degrees of max outdoor temp. Keep in mind this is not warm weather shutdown. My minimum outdoor temperature, that's your design day for your region. Uh, if your region is zero degrees of outdoor air, you choose zero. If you're in maybe Des Moines, Iowa, and they're minus five degrees, uh, you would type in minus five degrees just by simply backing it out. Or if you're in another region that it's 10 degrees as your design day, you would simply come in and type in 10 degrees. The minimum water temperature, that is what is your minimum temperature you need at your warm day. So on a 50 degree day, 
how much heat do I need to supply to the heating system? Uh, maybe that's 100, maybe that's 120 or 130. That's where you would get in and make your changes and click OK. And then minimum water temperature, if we were utilizing CH2 in our case where we disabled it for this example, but you could come in and choose that as well. Please don't forget to go in and watch part three of the six part series. All of the information is in the manuals. Uh, you can find that at download documents or document downloads right on Lars.com. Thank you.